Hi everyone, Ms. Patsy here at Castile Innovation Lab. Today we will be studying the fifth grade science book, Mixtures and Solutions, Investigation 1, Separating Mixtures, Part 3, Separating a Dry Mixture. Question, how can you separate a mixture of dry materials? Let's find out. In today's investigation, we are going to think like engineers. Engineers are people who use scientific knowledge, mathematics, and creative thinking to solve problems or to meet a specific challenge. The engineering design process starts with step one, understanding the problem thoroughly. Step two, carefully defining the criteria and constraints. Step three, devising a plan. Step four, building the planned solution. Step five, testing the solution and evaluating its performance. Step six, revising the plan based on data. And step seven, repeating until the solution satisfies the criteria and constraints. In today's investigation, we will be using gravel, salt, diatomaceous earth, water, a funnel, filter papers, evaporation dishes, a screen, magnets, stir sticks, and cups. So let's get started. The first step of thinking like an engineer is understanding the problem. In this cup, I have a mixture of gravel, diatomaceous earth, and salt. Today's challenge is to design a method to separate this mixture and put each material in separate cups. Step two of thinking like an engineer is carefully defining the criteria and constraints. The criteria are the things that the design needs to do. The design needs to separate this mixture into these four separate substances. The constraints are the limitations on the design, such as the materials available to us and the amount of time that we have to develop a solution. So these are the materials that are available to us and our class time together. Steps three and four of thinking like an engineer is to first devise a plan and build the planned solution. My plan is to separate these substances by using the property of particle size. So I know I will be using a screen to be filtering out the gravel, a the filter paper and the funnel to separate the powder, and an evaporation dish to separate the salt. Step five of thinking like an engineer is to test the solution and evaluate its performance. So we're going to start by adding water to our mixture. And let's separate the salt first. Now that we've separated our salt, we have our powder and our gravel in the filter. So how can we go about separating the powder and the gravel? I think one solution is to add more water.
and this time use the screen to separate the powder from the gravel. We still have some powder in here. Okay, so we've separated the powder from the gravel and we could put the gravel in the gravel cup. So now we've separated the gravel and the salt. Next, we'll need another filter paper. to separate the powder from the water. So now all we're left with is the powder in the filter paper. So we could put that in our powder cup. Now all we have left is our M cup. We are also left with magnets to use. And the only thing that I can think of is something in, something in the gravel we could separate. So let's see if our magnet picks up something in the gravel. So there are magnetic rocks in our gravel. That must be our M material, which is magnetite. And now we've successfully separated the substances from our mixture. Now step six of thinking like an engineer is to revise the plan based on data. Now from step five, I found that when I added water first to the mixture, the gravel got sticky and stuck to my cup. So I'm going to separate the gravel first in this step. And then now I can add water to my salt and powder. And separate that through the funnel. Squeeze out the excess water from the powder. Now I have the powder in my filter paper. I put that in my pea cup. And then I have my salt solution in my S cup. And then I take my magnet and I 
rub it in the gravel and then I have my magnetite separated and I can put that in my M cup. That was less steps than what we went through in our first trial. Step seven of thinking like an engineer is to repeat the solution until it satisfies the criteria and the constraints. So this time I'm going to see if I can simplify my separation of my materials. I'm gonna put my S cup on the bottom, my filter paper on top of that, my screen on top of that, and I'm going to add water to my mixture. Stir that up. Take my magnet. Stir it up in my gravel. So I have separated the magnetite, the gravel, the powder, and the salt solution. How can we further separate the salt solution? Well, that's what we have our evaporation dishes for. And then we get this, salt crystals. And how do we know that these are salt crystals? Because they are square with an X going from corner to corner. So let's discuss the results of our investigation. Today we use the engineering design process to separate materials out of our mixture. Step one, we understood the problem. Step two, we carefully defined the criteria and constraints. Step three, we devised a plan. And step four, we carried out the plan. Step five, we test the solution and evaluated its performance. Step six, we revised the plan based on data. And step seven, we repeated the solution until it satisfied the criteria and constraints. Why was the property of size helpful in separating our mixture? Because we can use specific tools such as the screen and filter to separate the materials. What were some of the other properties used to separate our mixture? We also used magnetism and evaporation. What happened when we used the evaporation dish to separate the parts of the solution? The water evaporated and salt crystals were left behind. I hope you enjoyed our investigation. Until next time, have a great day.